Like I said, I believe certain words should be protected and never given, never have their power taken away. Why do you think the government has to censor these words? I know why. Because they're trying to keep the Irishman down. That's all I got. I have been bleeped a few times. Uh, I said a couple things on The Tonight Show. I've never been invited back. I was on the couch and I, I went to, you know, I'm at the point in my life, I'm 50 and I'm single and uh, uh, I don't want to wear a condom. I really don't care. I hate them. I don't want to wear them. So instead of wearing a condom, I'm, I'm just going to f*** chicks that no one else would want to sleep with. Okay? So they bleep me and Jay went, I don't know if he can say that. I said, uh, that's why I'm looking at that chick in the band. Well, it was a big brouhaha, and I just thought it was funny. I'm doing the Ed Sullivan show, which was live, and the president was about to make an announcement, so I was doing my act, and he was letting me know that he only got two minutes left. And I started to say, what are you, you showing me fingers? This is no time to show me fingers. They didn't come to watch your fingers, they came to watch me. I got fingers for you if you got fingers for me. And he thought I was giving him this. When I got off the air, he ran over to me, he said, you son of a bitch, you he started to curse and yell, and I didn't know what the hell he was cursing and screaming about, but I saw, I knew I did something, I didn't know what. Basically, it ruined my career. That's the main thing. It wiped me out for the next 20 years. Because after that, I had an image of a guy who was irresponsible and can't be trusted to be on television. I was starting to see just how divisive an issue profanity could be. Yes, I see. But what's so special about the public airwaves? Who decided that's the one place where we absolutely can't swear? That's radio for you. And how is anyone supposed to know what we can and can't say? Broadcasting is different than other things. This was a medium that was in everybody's living room. So that beat the movies, which was just in everybody's town. Broadcasting came over the air. The air belongs to you and me. And uh, therefore, it has a, um, uh, uh, there's a stewardship quality to it, which, of course, the FCC regulates on our behalf. The Federal Communications Commission is charged with the responsibility of protecting the people's interest. The FCC's indecency policy right now is that Congress has told the country in Section 1464 of the federal criminal law that broadcasting obscenity, indecency, and profanity is illegal. Obscenity is especially important because it is not protected by the First Amendment. Obscenity was essentially designed as a category to include hardcore pornography. Then we get to indecency. Indecency is, uh, has been defined by the FCC as uh, of descriptions or depictions of sexual or excretory activities that are uh, patently offensive for, under community standards, for the broadcast industry. There is this rule that from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., you've really got to watch your P's and Q's when it comes to poo-poo, pee-pee, and S-E-X. So censoring words and imposing fines had become the new form of punishment in today's world. Are you going to be on my side if I let you up? Sure, take sure. I'm on your side. But how did the FCC know which words were offensive? Now, does that help answer your question? I still don't exactly see why they were picked. Well, it all comes back to George Carlin. And Now, that was the original list. We've added a few words since then. We've added fart, turd, and twat. <laughs> I went to visit Harry Cole, a member of the team that argued the landmark 1978 Supreme Court case, popularly called the Carlin case, that helped define what the FCC considers indecent material. So now, Harry, you were on the team that argued the Carlin case before the Supreme Court, right? That's correct, yeah. That suit wasn't against Carlin, was no. it? No. No, it was against an over-the-air broadcast station. Uh -huh. Station here in uh, New York, uh, WBAI. And uh, Pacifica, the WBAI licensee, broadcast the Carlin monologue. Mm -hmm. 2.30 in the afternoon, uh, one guy who was driving around, according to his letter, with his young son, happened to hear it on the radio, and uh, he got all bent out of shape and wrote a letter to the FCC. And that's how all this started? That, that's, that's before then, the FCC did not have an articulated indecency policy at all. So Carlin, just by, he just wrote a bit. Right. And it became the standard? It, the, the, one of the great ironies of this whole thing is that everybody refers to the seven dirty words you can't say on TV. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter was, Carlin made that up. Up until 1973, when the Carlin monologue was broadcast, the FCC had never laid out what you could and couldn't say mm -hmm. in the way of dirty words. So Pacifica was in violation of a standard that didn't exist yet. That's correct. 
So it's our responsibility to figure out if we can air this show. Well, we should be able to figure it out based on what the FCC allowed in the past. Good idea. So, in 1999, CBS ran an episode of Chicago Hope where a character said, Shit happens. What time did that air? Prime time, 9 to 10 p.m. Well, that's during the safe harbor times of 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yep. What was the FCC fine for that? There was no fine. How come? No idea. Maybe shit's okay. But in 2004, a PBS station got fined for airing a documentary called The Blues, where some blues musicians swore $15,000. Shit. An episode of South Park in 2001 used the word shit 162 times, and that's a cartoon. That must have been a huge fine. Nope, no fine for that, because South Park's on basic cable. FCC only levies fines on over-the-air broadcasters. Cable networks are immune. Then, ABC aired Saving Private Ryan with tons of swears. That's an over-the-air broadcaster. They must have gotten killed by the FCC. Nope, no fine. No fine? FCC claimed that it was okay for the swears given the context. So, war's okay, blue's not. Then, in 2003, the FCC found that Bono's F-bomb on NBC's Golden Globe Awards was a fleeting expletive and was therefore okay. Fleeting expletive okay. But then they reversed that finding in 2004 when the FCC decided that it was definitely indecent. Fleeting expletive not okay. So, there you have it. That should clarify things. Can we air this show or not? I have no idea. The way in which the, the courts and the regulators of the FCC have tried to uh, bring some sense of uniformity to what we consider to be a decent language uh, has turned out to be a real mess. The biggest problem here is that the, the definition of indecency is so vague. The First Amendment is not intended to give the media an absolute right to cause unlimited harm to society as a whole and to individuals within that society and never have to answer for the consequences. What if you took that attitude towards literature? First of all, Romeo and Juliet, it's gotta go. It's about two, what, 14-year-olds who uh, kill themselves because mommy and daddy won't let them be together. That's a bad influence on kids, and I was forced to read that at about the age of uh, uh, Romeo. Censors make a big fuss over things. It kind of calls attention to things that the censors actually don't want attention called to. In a way, the censorship keeps these words alive when what the censorship is supposed to do is keep them from being expressed. The broadcaster has a right under the law to broadcast whatever they want, but at least historically they did not have a right to harm, cause the kind of harm they are causing to our society and to individuals today, and neither do, uh, historically, neither do cable and satellite providers or the internet. Hi, Pearl. You don't have to raise your voice. The launch of Funny or Die was the exact same moment that the landlord went up. Our first video was the landlord. That was what started the site. And we knew it was a funny video. We had no idea it would blow up like it did. We thought it would get like a million hits, maybe two million because Will was in it. And then, you know, the thing was just getting like 10 million a day at one point. I think it's the second most viewed video in internet history or it's up there somewhere. I've never experienced anything like it in the sense that we actually had no censor. We were really surprised when people started getting offended that Pearl said, she said two words. She said bitch, and she said ah. You need to relax. Yeah. Uh-uh. And that was just one of those cases where I'm like, well, wait, she's not saying anything. If she said the F word or even, you know, MF or any of those kinds of words, I kind of get it. But Pearl at that age just says words and instantly forgets them, which is why I would even have her say the word bitch. She doesn't go around saying it after she heard it. I don't even view the word bitch as a curse word. And ah is edgy, admittedly. It was very surprising, but ultimately I still don't care. <laughs>
her new TV network. I wonder what Dr. Phil would say about that. I'm gonna put you in a situation, respond with the first word that comes to your mind. And your whole family's gonna be on the street. Shoot. Your whole family's on the street, and you say shoot? Yes. Okay, 